everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this video is going to be a gear load out of my lightweight backpack that I've been putting together over the last few weeks. Um, we've got a summer of staycations ahead of us so I'm going to be heading out and doing a lot of hill walking. So I've got some new things in here, some old things and I've got a new tent which I want to show you which is a, a Jack Wolfskin Exolite 1 tent. It's not a brand I'm particularly familiar with or a brand that I would gravitate towards but um, I bought one of the tents so hopefully if the rain hangs off I'll get that up for you later on but uh, I'm going to try not to waffle on too much I'm just going to get the pack off and I'll show you what I've got inside So in uh, backpacking parlance from what I can gather a lightweight backpack is a pack between 10 and 20 pounds um, so 20 pounds is about 9.7 kilograms uh, and this bag its base weight uh, which is um, just the camping gear with no food or water weighs in at 8.3 kilograms so I'm going to say that this is a lightweight pack um, that might change once the liquid gets added I'm going to say it's three season but really I think it's four season I would use this uh, this gear um, all year round here in the UK uh, so yeah let's have a look first of all the bag um, this is a, a Fjallraven Abisko Freeluft 45 it's actually my wife's pack uh, but because she's only five foot tall she found it a little bit too long for her so she bought a, a, a woman specific uh, backpack so I kind of I've just claimed this as a um, as a hill walking bag but I do have the uh, Fjallraven um, Lapland 45 which is a similar bag but a hunting version which I use for uh, for day trips I took it up to Scandinavia with me they are really comfortable packs made out of the Fjallraven G1000 and this particular model has the uh, the mesh on the back so that's really good for, for summer lets the air get through and it's also very comfortable now what I've got in here is a, an MSR trail shot water filter. Now this is a new bit of kit and I haven't used it yet. It, uh, it's quite handy actually. You've got a, a, a long tube here which you can put into a, a stream, a river, a lake or what have you. You just take the cap off, you get your water container <coughs> And you just kind of squeeze it's got a little filter on the end there and that's going to give you clean water so next up in the top pocket got a simple toiletries kit which is just a toothbrush and some toothpaste and a Fjallraven uh, rain cover that came with the backpack now on the inside pocket here I've got a, a couple of items that I'll probably not use so much um, compass I'll use that if I get lost and I've got a little bag here with um, a little Opinel I think it's a number seven knife I've got a, a fire steel in case the ignition on my stove fails and uh, just a simple repair kit for the tent uh, pole repair and this is a uh, a tenacious tape which is really good for kind of um, sailing up tears or anything like that so they live in that pocket underneath the hood what we're missing is the head torch this is the the Petzl ticker head torch had this now for about three years uh, it's nothing fancy about it it's just a good bright uh, head torch so on the outside of the bag I've got a, a couple of pairs of gloves now these are the the Hestra Ergo Grip um, an excellent glove not very warm but once you uh, you start moving and you need uh, something to keep the cold wind off your hands these are really useful especially if you use walking poles um, they've got a, a lovely soft leather palm and a wind stopper on the uh, wind stopper fabric on the on the back of the hand I use these for cycling I use them for canoeing um, hiking they're not very robust so they're not a, a bushcraft type of uh, glove I wouldn't pick up uh, 
anything hot off a campfire with them or anything like that but for just a pair of um, gloves for when you're on the go in the winter they are really really nice as I mentioned they're not very warm so if you're getting up early in the morning and you're, you're just starting to hike in the winter I usually bring along these with me they're a pair of uh, triple points low alpine mitts they are waterproof to a certain degree and again I've had these for oh, probably about seven or eight years now they're starting to get a bit worn but they're still functional they are mitts but they have a glove inside so the fingers uh, are separated inside so they're really warm really comfortable and perfect for those freezing cold winter mornings and then in the side pocket here just got a little a little cheap foam pad so if you're sitting down for a brew or a eat a sandwich or something while you're on the trail you can just stick this underneath it to stop your ass getting wet and cold and on this side I've got a, a spare um, Nalgene one litre water bottle because I'm probably going to be using a lot of dehydrated or freeze dried food when I'm up hiking in the hills so I've got a couple of water bottles with me just so I can make sure I've got enough water you know if you're not camping next to a, a water source so on the strap I've got another water bottle which is the one that I'll probably you know drink out of as I'm hiking I have got um, the hydration packs that go in the pack but I find that you know you can't tell how much water's left you know if you've got a two litre one you can easily drink two litres in the summer very quickly and then you're thinking well how much is in there do I have to take the pack off open it up take the hydration later pack out to see how much water I've got left before I need to go and filter some more so, to be honest I've just given up on them so I've just got a, a Marmot uh, water bottle holder here which clips onto the strap and a 750 ml water bottle so um, you know I can see how much water I've got left and I can just fill up with a stream or a lake or a pond or whatever so I've also got the tent on the outside of the bag which we'll come to in a moment and in the pocket on the strap I've just got a, a simple first aid kit fairly lightweight but I, I think you should really always bring one of these along with you in here I've just got um, some of those little plasters for, for blisters which are always handy when you're hiking uh, some alcohol wipes, some plasters and uh, a tick removal tool I don't really like the, the little plastic ones you get these are, uh, I think they're Life Venture uh, metal ones I just find these easy to use so this bag as you would expect has a, a, draw, a drawstring opening on the top here it has a system that allows you to just kind of pull it open quickly like that so if you wanted to get something right from the very bottom of the pack you can just kind of unzip it like that and, and get in that way or you can open the pack in its entirety like that this this is actually quite useful for when you're, you're packing up in the morning just to keep the bag open like this uh, keep the backpack flat lie everything in and zip it up so I've got a bag here with some uh, spare clothes in um, you always want to take a spare pair of socks with you I've also got uh, a good thick uh, woolly hat this is the Fjallraven Byron hat had this for a good few years really warm in the winter and then I've got a my old North Face Nupti body warmer now I've had this oh, probably about 13 years I bought it a long time ago um, but it's a really really warm uh, body warmer this is the uh, the Exped uh, Sinmat 7 LW long and wide now I bought this originally to use with the uh, the Amok Hammock but uh, in its own right it is a really really comfortable warm um, sleeping mat if not a little heavy I think it weighs just over a kilogram uh, size wise it's 197 by 65 by 7 centimeters so plenty of length um, plenty of thickness and most importantly for me plenty of width now I've also got the um, the Exped Schnozzle which is a, 
a large dry bag and it has um, the schnozzle attachment on the end so you don't need to blow your, your air bed up you just kind of um, you just stick that on waft it about a bit like this wrap it up and then just pump the um, the mattress up now what I do as well um, I'm one of these people I like to sleep with a lot of pillows I usually have about three pillows at home so instead of bringing one of those little camping pillows with me in the past I've just used this as a pillow so I just kind of fill it up I'll fasten it up like that and you end up with a, a decent sized pillow so in terms of sleeping bags I've got the the Rab Ascent 700 down sleeping bag here so there's the sleeping bag and the mat set up the uh, the pump bag with the X-Bed mat just makes life easy a couple of pumps and it's it's full so you don't have to kind of blow anything up at the end of a hard day's hiking so the uh, the Rab sleeping bag it's just basically a standard down sleeping bag um, nothing spectacular about it really it's just got a couple of baffles here to, to tighten across your shoulders and the hood uh, it's got a, a little pocket there to keep your phone in or what have you a few details there about the comfort rating so it's the comforts minus two limit of comfort minus 8.5 and the extreme is minus 27 um, yeah really nice comfortable sleeping bag definitely uh, three or four seasons here in the UK I would have thought uh, the zip goes pretty much the entire length of the bag which is useful one of the problems with uh, down is that it actually loses its insulation when it gets wet so uh, this sleeping bag has a pertex uh, lining there to help repel water and the hydrophobic European premium duck down which I think is coated with nick wax just to help repel the water and uh, retain the insulation properties so this is the PCS, that's what they call them these days, the personal cooking system. For me, the days of cooking up a full English breakfast on a Trangia stove on the side of a hill are long gone. Too much work to carry, so I'll show you what I've got here. I'm going to switch over to just using dehydrated or freeze-dried meals, and this little unit is perfect for that. So I've got a, a couple of uh, wild or folder cups, which I'll come to in a moment. But the main event is... Uh, a Highlander um, fast boil Mark III. Now this is based on the uh, the popular jet boil stoves. So you basically you've got a large uh, aluminium pot here. This one's hard anodized, and you've got a number of um, uh, heat transfer fins on the bottom, which which help the uh, the water boil a lot quicker than they would on a traditional uh, gas stove. You've got a, a plastic lid here with a, a draining spout if you want to cook pasta or rice uh, and a pouring spout there. Um, I'll just remove my, my titanium spoon there. Now this is the burner itself, uh, just a standard gas burner. It's got an adjustment valve there and a piezo or a piezo ignition, whatever you want to call them. Um, this is probably the weak point of the stove actually it doesn't seem to be that well made there's a bit of movement here and there but we'll see how long it lasts and then it comes with a, um, a stand here for your gas canister you can fit the gas canister in the in the pot I've got a, a Coleman Extreme C100 canister here which is perfect just for an overnighter and um, the pot itself it's got a capacity of 1.1 litres, so it's fairly large. Um, I think it's it's comparison in the um, the jet ball range would be the the mini more whatever it's called. Now that comes in at about 140 or 150 pounds, and it weighs about 430 grams. This weighs 500 grams, and it cost me 55 pound, including delivery. So it's actually uh, you know it's quite good value. The test will just be um, how long it lasts, you know. So I've also got these uh, these wild or folding cups. There's a couple of them. This one is for your wine on the evening. And there's a, a larger one here, which you can use 
for a big mug of coffee in the morning or you can put porridge in there or a cup of soup. So it's fairly easy to put together, just takes a few moments and uh, that's what it looks like when it's all set up. And it does work pretty well, I've used it quite a bit up in the woods just to, to make a coffee while I'm on the go and I am quite pleased with it. So this is the Jack Wolfskin Exolite 1 Solo Tent. Um, it weighs 1.4 kilograms. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, Jack Wolfskin, I don't really know a lot about them. It's not a company I would normally gravitate towards. All I know is that they're a German brand and they've been on the go since 1980. But I've always kind of seen them as a more of a high street fashion outdoor brand, a bit like North Face these days than, than anything serious. But the tents seem to get, you know, quite good reviews. Um, I paid £250 for this, which was a bit more than what I really wanted to spend. Um, but a lot of the tents I was looking at were just out of stock everywhere. I think what happened last year with the old staycations, everyone went out and bought tents. So that when I came to buy one, there was just none left. So um, I decided just to buy this and I'm just going to see how it goes. So let's get it up and have a look. Well folks, I was quite impressed with that. The tent went up really quickly. It just has a single pole system. So, uh, you know, it's fairly straightforward. You just put the, each end into the, the corner there. They are colour coded. Blue end of the pole goes in the blue tab. And, you know, once that's that's done, you just clip the plastic along and peg it out. Um, literally just a couple of moments. So the good thing about this tent, it, uh, it doesn't use that many pegs. I've only got six pegs in at the moment. Um, four on the corners and one on, on each side. And you're supposed to pitch it with this end facing the prevailing wind. So there's not much volume there to catch the wind. And the, the single pole just has a, a couple of these hubs and the, these plastic clips just, just clip on. So yeah, first impressions, not too bad. It's got this kind of crossbar here to keep the, the tent out. And you've got these little kind of pull cords there to, to get things tight once you've got the tent set up. And I have noticed the door has, it has three zips on it. So you can, once you've got the tent fastened up, you can you know, create some ventilation here. So there's enough room to get your backpack and your boots and that in this uh, this area. I mean, it's not a massive tent. It's a it's a lightweight one-person tent. Um, the sleeping area is fairly compact. I mean, the X-bed mat I think it's 197 centimeters long. So you're probably getting about two meters uh, length here, and it's 65 centimeters wide. So it's just about wide enough to accommodate the mat. 
I've got the uh, the pump bag in there as a nice comfy pillow. The bug net stashes into this little pocket here and you do have a, another little uh, opening here and there's actually quite a bit of room there you know. I mean some people say you put your boots there but I wouldn't want to kind of cross my sleeping bag and that with with muddy boots so you can potentially just keep your cooking gear and your food and that out there perhaps. So the uh, the mesh is uh, really fine fine micro mesh so small enough to keep out the the Scottish midges and you can just see where it's joined to the top there and there is a, a hanging loop there in case you want to hang a hang a torch or anything like that so yeah it's uh yeah seems all right so you can just roll the other door back as well that has a, a plastic clip on which crosses over and goes onto this this pole there so that gives you quite a you know, a nice little shelter if the uh, if the weather permits. You know, you can just sit there on an evening, drinking your wine and taking in the views. So that's the contents of the lightweight backpack for the up and coming adventures I've got planned for the summer. We've got about three and a half weeks to wait now until lockdown gets lifted until the 12th of April and we can uh, head to the hills. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with um, the pack. I haven't really bought that much new stuff. I've had a lot of this gear for quite a while. Just the tent is new, which I'm quite pleased about actually. I'm really looking forward to, to giving that a shot out on the hills and the, uh, the little um, Highlander stove, the PCS, the personal cooking system. So yeah, um, 8.3 kilograms. I'll be able to lose a bit of that in the summer once you take the winter clothing out. Um, so I guess this bag's gonna be good for, a, definitely good for an overnight, uh, possibly two nights. I mean, all you really need to do is just add more food. And if you stick with the, um, you know, the dehydrated meals, you can easily get a, a good couple couple of days worth of food in here so um, I'm gonna stop waffling on and I'm gonna say thanks for watching um, hope you enjoyed the video hope you found some of it useful I'll see you again in the next one mm -hmm.